Hey guys, this is Drew with Acoustic Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. At the man, the myth, the legend's house, Trent Schwartz's house. This guy is awesome. Uh, if you want to pan to him, he's right there just chilling, getting himself a, a nice beer for the weekend. But we bought some nice coins uh, at his house. Uh, we had a great interview with him. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. All right, so we just, like I said, we just bought some coins from Trent. A lot of nice stuff here. Um, some walkers that are a little bit harder to find. You see that nice 1917 here. Uh, we'll try to include some extra photos just so you guys can see it better. Um, that coin's just hard to find, especially in this AU condition. No problems with it. Um, nice original. This is kind of what Trent likes to pick up. Uh, a 1916 half, um, I would say kind of VF area. Um, another nice original coin, 1916D. I mean, just. Just really beautiful coins. Uh, very happy about those. Um, you know, people like the rattlers. Got one of those. This thing rattles like a snake. Um, not really a, uh, a barber guy, but Trent got me hooked into barbers. Uh, we got two uh, proof barber halves here. Uh, we got a proof dime here. Um, it's, I mean, the whole variety of stuffs are really nice. Um, got a really interesting uh, 1807. It's a Drake bust half. My bad. I'm, I'm, I'm dumb. But. Um, just a really nice coin, no problems with it, uh, issue free. Um, got a nice commemorative here, um, really nice uh, seated dollar. Um, you know, very, very happy with all this. Um, Trent always hooks us up. If you guys uh, want uh, to talk to Trent or uh, you know buy something from him, he's got a lot of nice stuff. We're gonna leave his information uh, down below. Uh, but let's let's sit down, let's talk to Trent. Um, he's got a lot of information and knowledge that most of you guys don't hear on a daily basis. Um, he's just a true, uh, you know, wealth of knowledge. But without further ado, let's talk to the Trent. All right, we just made it to our coin show of the weekend here at over at Trent's house. But introduce yourself. Um, who are you? Um, just so everybody knows. So I'm Trent Swartz. Uh, I am the owner of TCS Coins. I'll show that to the camera a little bit. Awesome. And uh, yeah, Drew and Casey come and. We do coin deals all the time, and so uh, they came to the house, made a few purchases, talked about some of the coins that I like to collect, some of the things that I deal in, uh, some of the coins I sell, um, and yeah, we do great business together. They're great to work with, and so uh, definitely hit them up if you're watching this video on YouTube. Hey, hit up Trent, too. He's pretty cool. He's got a lot of good stuff. <laughs> uh, what what kind of got you into collecting, Trent? Because you, you do do a lot of, of, you sell everything, you know your stuff, uh, you know Gray Sheet pretty well. What got you into the whole buying and selling and also just collecting? So when I was, I guess, whatever year the state quarters came out, um, my mom bought us, you know, I have two brothers, bought us all a state quarter book. You know, it's kind of an origin story for a lot of people. And I would go through my dad's change, and every time a new one would come out, I'd go fill the book. And it was just kind of like this gear that got caught in me where I would see that quarter of my dad's change, take it, go run and put it in my, my book. And that kind of lit the fire for all the stuff that I do now. And so now it's a lot more expensive than state quarters. Um, but that was one of the big pushes. And then another thing, my grandmother, we'd do chores for her around the house. And she'd give us a $2 bill or a Susan B. Anthony dollar. And we thought we'd hung the moon. We thought we just had this rare, you know, uh, paper money, you know, rare coin. And we you know, put them all in the safe and we're like, we just thought we hung the moon. And so between those two things kind of got my interest and I kind of fell out for a few years. And then I got older, had a little bit of money, started buying some silver dollars, um, just some odds and ends. We had a really good local coin shop um, and then got into college and realized how much of a passion I had for it. So built just about every set that you can imagine, pretty much every type coin. Um, I, I, I've done the book on it, you know, so, you know, Lincoln cents to Barber's to Morgan's to Peace. I've pretty well collected every set uh, you can imagine. And so from there, I was like, you know, I really have a passion for this and I think I can sell. And so I started selling it first to feed the hobby. You know, I wanted to feed my collections and the only way I could build up enough capital to get my collections where I wanted them was to sell. And then I realized how much I like selling, I like buying coins, I like going to coin shows, I like going to coin shops. And so now I've made a business out of it. And so I enjoy the connections that I make, you know, dealer to dealer, show to show, shop to shop, and I'll buy and sell. And then there's, you know, certain coins that I'll put to the side for myself. 
Hey guys, we wanted to take a break in today's video um, just to tell you guys to, if you are enjoying the video, please like the video, uh, comment uh, something that you think um, kind of is inspiring and interesting about Trent, um, and subscribe if you're new. Uh, we try to you know make videos every single week, and we want to start to get more coin dealers on our channel. Uh, nice, reputable people that really like to help others in the hobby, but also stay tuned. We're going to show off the rest of the coins. Uh, that we got from Trent's house at the end of the video, so you're not going to want to miss that. Um, but let's get back to the interview. So it's kind of about the hunt and also about the collecting side of things. Um, so what do you kind of collect now that you're, you know, you over the years we all get kind of a refined taste. Like what's something that you collect now that people can understand about Trent? Because we all have our things that we enjoy collecting. So, you know, my my first part of me being a collector was fill the book. You know, everybody kind of gets that bug. You buy a Dansko album, you know, buy a Littleton album, and you just, you want to fill every slot, you want to fill, every, you know, every hole in that book, and you go and you go to show and you buy all of them. And so now I've kind of backed away from that, and I've got a more refined taste in terms of what type of coins that I like. And I consider myself a barber specialist, and so I don't have any halves here, but I've got some, some dimes and some quarters proof, you know, uh, business strikes. And so coins like this right here, um pop one uh proof 58 you know not not a rare proof by any means but for the grade the cac um the look it's just an exceptional coin um and i think i paid over market for this coin because it's just you cannot find this kind of stuff uh at a show and so i think i've been i've had offers you know four or five times to buy this coin and it's just not for sale i mean this is something that goes into my personal um, and I, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy it. Um, other coins, um, like, you know, like this CAC dime, I've recently got into Barber Proofs. Uh, you know, older holder, older NGC holder, we've got a CAC. It's got a lot going for it. It's got some cameo type surfaces. These are the kind of things that I'll look for and I'll pull out uh, and put in my personal. Now again, I'm a seller, so I try to sell almost everything I buy, but there's certain things that if I find them, you know, I know how hard it is to find it at a show uh, or just in general. And so I'll put that, you know, the, in the deep stack, so to speak, and put those away. And so all these, you know, again, everything's for sale for the right price, but this is the kind of stuff that I put away. Um, super original, good surfaces. Um, I love what CAC does and I like what they represent in terms of the coin you're buying. And so that's kind of what I'm geared towards today. So it kind of tells you what kind of quality that you know you should be looking out for, especially with barbers. Um, what kind of which one is your favorite business strike? Because I know that you've submitted a few of them, and I see a few that are down here. Which one's kind of the one that is the favorite for you that kind of pops out? Because the the barbers are kind of hard to find, especially original, um, you know, that are AU in the AU range, and uh, many people are looking for them. So this coin, and I'll pull it out specifically because I bought this coin raw. Uh, and I don't even know I got it for a great price I think I bought it for like VF money which was kind of crazy at the time uh, and you know had a PCGS go order going in I said oh you know I think it'll go 45 and sent it in and blow and hold it goes 50 and I got to looking at it and it's a 50 coin and you know the more I got into this I started looking at you know this coin is so so original and to find coins like this when you go to a show when you're trying to fill your book they're just impossible I mean, any coin that I get like this, they're just they're just not for sale. And if you want them, you're gonna have to pay a premium for them. And so, you know, I had Drew uh, and Casey send this in for me, and it went ahead and cacked right away. Um, I probably thought this coin out of all the ones that I sent in had the best chance of cacking. Um, but I think it coins like this mean so much more to you when you find them raw, you grade them yourself, and then you also get them to cack. You know, you're not buying this coin made already so to speak i made this coin and so those are the ones you typically appreciate a lot more because you put in the time you put in the work and you got this coin work to where it is today and so that's that you know those are the kind of coins that i i really 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 enjoy so it's kind of the story that you need to have behind the coin that reinforces you wanting to keep it um do you have any coin stories that you would say that kind of just 
that you kind of reminisce sometimes and really make makes it kind of worth it in the hobby because there's a lot of things for us that we that we look back on sometimes and we're like wow like we're so glad we got to experience that especially with coins uh, anything like that you would like to share with our audience yeah I'll tell you uh, I'll tell you a story of a, a one that got away more to so to speak than one that I actually bought um, I had the opportunity to when I was younger and of course I didn't know as much at the time to buy a rare air coin and it, you know I don't really do a whole lot in air coins but I knew it was special and it was a penny planchet that had been struck with a Kennedy half dollar and so I think it was like 85% off center um, I had the opportunity to buy that coin for I don't know probably 500 ish and you know dealer couldn't sell it a local coin store couldn't sell it didn't have the clientele took it to a coin show put it on consignment and the dealer I think within two days got five grand for the coin and so stories like that are what drive me to do what I'm doing now you can go to a coin show and a hundred people can look at one coin and they may not see the value in that coin that you might see maybe the holder uh, maybe the grade maybe the originality you know there's all these factors you have to look at and develop your expertise to be able to go and say okay I'm gonna pay up for that coin I'm gonna either you know resub it I'm gonna send it to CAC you know I'm gonna get it graded if it's a raw coin and you are gonna see that value and you're gonna you know build upon its own value based on what you can do with it and so I love to do that I, I particularly will buy raw coins faster than I will buy graded coins because to me to me the money's there you know I can I can do more with them and I enjoy picking up and holding raw coins and knowing you know what can I do with them down the road can I grade them can I sell it raw you know did they undergrade this coin are they underselling it there's there's more room there versus a graded coin you know there's nothing wrong with it and the graded services are great there's not often always that room on a graded coin that you can get with a raw coin and so like you know we talk about commodity coins you know MS64 MS65 Morgan's, you know, you pay one price, you may make 5% on that coin. Whereas if I go and I, you know, pick up a raw coin, send that coin in, and if it grades, you know, if it upgrades and, and it gets a better grade, I could make 50, 60, 70% on that coin. Right. And so it's, it's all about playing the game, it's all about developing your eye. And I think from a grading standpoint, it took me probably four or five years, and I'd take it one series at a time. I'd buy that series, I collect that series, develops my to grade that coin, and now um, you know you see what I buy, and so I'll buy just about any type of coin out there because I develop my eye and I know how to grade some of those coins, and so it's all about developing your eye, you know, getting where you want in terms of what you want to buy, and knowing what to do with the coin when you get it. Yeah, there's kind of that understanding gap when you with raw coins is apart from. Uh, holder coins. Holder coins have their own kind of evils, but there's a lot of issues that happen with raw coins and there's a reason why people don't submit them. So when you find a really nice raw coin, it really changes the game and allows people to have that experience, especially with sending stuff in. So I really commend you on that and like the things that the opportunities you let us uh, have a choice at. But uh, is there any people that you want to thank or like, you know, just who in your life has really pushed you and helped you kind of follow what you enjoy? I know that you, you know, you're still going to school and have a lot of things going that way, but you know, who's, who's kind of propelling you in the coin space to keep doing what you love? So again, you got to think a lot of people, you got to think, you know, for one, my wife, she doesn't want to be on camera, but uh, she's in here with us. Don't tell me. And, and uh, uh, you know, sugar mama, so to speak, you know, I'm in school, don't make a whole lot of money. And uh, so, you know, she sees my passion for this. She pushes me forward. You know, we have a travel trailer. She'll get in that travel trailer with me. We'll go to a coin show, spend a couple days, buy coins. You know, it's always at first it was kind of like, oh man, another coin show. And now she realizes like, man, you, you know, he has such a passion for this. He's made money doing this. You know, this we get to travel, we get to go to all these places uh, and it's a good time. The other thing is you gotta think of all your dealer connections. You know, you, Casey, um, some other people, Tom and Sandy, just throw some names out there. Um, Sunny, Royal Coins in Houston. Um, there's so many people out there, you've got to build your connections. And so, you know, when I first started collecting, it was so hard to buy. And it was so hard to get things at good prices because people didn't know you. Right. The more you develop those connections, I mean, there'd be times where I'd drop, you know, 1000 or $2,000 at a dealer's table. 
knowing full well I wasn't going to make a lot of money on what I was buying, but I wanted that connection. You know, maybe the next time I go there, maybe they sell me stuff at a discount because they're like, okay, this guy, he shows up each and every time. He puts up the money. He buys from us. He's a regular customer, and he treats us right. And so you've got to have those dealer connections. You can go to coin shows all you want. You know, you can walk in as a random person. You can buy from anybody in there. But the ones you have the connections with, they're the, going to be the ones that push you the coins. They're going to say, hey, Trent, I just got this coin in. I know what you like. I know you like this kind of coin. You're the first one I've offered it to. And so I have, you know, dealers and friends that I will do that same thing with. I know there's a coin or type that they like. I'll immediately offer to them first. Give them a shot at it. You know, take care of your friends, your family first. And just develop on those relationships. You know, and my parents through all this and grandparents, they're all very supportive. You know, they realize that it's a good investment, that I make money, that I love what I'm doing with it. Um, I've got a lot of family members that I've brought into the hobby just by collecting and selling. And so there's all these connections that you build up along the way that you utilize when you're buying, selling, collecting, whatever you're doing. It's all about connections. People will tell you that all the time. You got to build your network. And so the better your professional network, better prices, better coins, you know, it, it all evens itself out. People will take care of you if you're good to them. And uh, one last question. Off the top of your head, if someone wanted to start selling coins tomorrow, what would, what would one tip that you would give them that you would say is pretty influential? So it's kind of hard, but I'll, I'll give you two things. Number one, you need to learn how to grade. And so the number one issue I have with young sellers, new collectors is they buy the holder rather than buying the coin. And you're again, you're going to watch and people will tell you that all the time, buy the coin, not the holder, but it's so true. But to add to that, learn how to grade because you're not always going to find the coins you want in a holder. If you're one of those people that only buys holder coins, you're not always going to find that in a holder. You may find it raw and you have to rely on your instincts, your ability to grade that coin accurately. Is it clean? Does it have problems? Will it straight grade? And if you can do that consistently, I can promise you that you will make money. And so you've got to rely on all of those tools to put you where you're at. Um, the next thing is, you know, use your resources. Um, I, I don't know how many times I've seen a young seller collector, you know, and they've got the old red book, you know, and they're walking around with that. There's nothing wrong with that. but. You've got eBay, you've got auction comps, you've got PCGS price guides, you've got NGC price guides, gray sheet, all that stuff. You've got to use that to your advantage. And, you know, just one thing, just to add one more thing, put in the work. You know, I don't know how many times I see people going to show and they just kind of mosey around like, oh, you know, looking, they won't dig through the boxes. You know, you go to a show and you're looking for something, don't be scared to sit down and spend two hours at a table you know, with a dealer, you know, we've all been there. There's this dealer that's unorganized. They got their stuff scattered everywhere. A lot of times, that's where the best deals are. You know, use your resources, put in the work, don't be scared of hard work, and learn how to grade. Thank you, Trent, for uh, sitting down with us today. We learned a lot, and uh, we look forward to just making more deals and also having you more, you know, having you more episodes because you are uh, a wealth of knowledge and uh, true inspiration for all of us. But thank you again, and uh, we'll let you go. Hey. Glad you could have me. Always a pleasure. Yes, sir. Okay, so we just got home from Trent's house. Uh, got this nice bust half dollar here, really original coin. I uh, like that one a lot. Uh, here's this really nice Texas. Don't want to touch the touch the coin itself, but you know, super flashy original coin. Never mess with. Most of these aren't, you know, and if they are, that you know, you get them for a really nice price. Uh, Trent's really good about that, like we were talking about earlier. Uh, a few other things here, you know, a nice seated uh, seated half, 1854O with uh, with arrows, 1807 drape bust half here. I'm uh, pretty circulated, but I mean, nice original example. You know, just just the circulation is the issue on, of course. Um, I like the rim kind of accent that it has. Uh, pretty nice coin here. Um, you got a seated dollar. Um, it's been through the ringer, has some issues, but uh, pretty neat coin. Um, has been cleaned, has been polished in some way, in my opinion. Um, you know, I like that coin a lot. 
I uh, have some other stuff over here. Um, got a few proof uh, coins from him. Uh, got a proof dime here. Uh, two proof halves. Uh, I got a few Kennedy half dollars we got to put up on the website. Uh, interesting kind of date, 1894S, uh, Barber Quarter. Um, and a few other holders here. Um, you know, nice Walker half in a rattler. Uh, another nice proof dime. This one's kind of looking a little cameo uh, from what he was saying. And kind of the coolest thing that I like most about the, the pickups was this nice eight, 1918 uh, SLQ, great AU58 uh, by NGC. A little bit of issues on the holder there, but that's the way it goes. Uh, got some cheap AccuGrade stuff as well, but overall, uh, a pretty nice. Uh, group of stuff um, but I hope you guys enjoyed today's video a lot of this stuff will be on our website AcousiaCollectibles.com um, if you guys did enjoy today's video please leave a like uh, comment what your favorite coin of the video is um, there's gonna be a lot of them like I said on our website um, and subscribe for more we got videos coming out every single week